It's pretty difficult to imagine that anyone would find pleasure or amusement in trekking the far-flung reaches of the country unless you are the intrepid, outdoorsy type. For me, it's a job and one that I'm damn sure in love with, despite the misgivings of accepting challenges that take me completely off the beaten path. In fact, today's assignment has me entirely off the grid, a total departure from the urban civilization I've always known. Assuming this task simply meant that I would trade the pavements of Belize City for the unforgiving mock and demanding terrain of the hinterlands. My destination? The bowels of the Chikibul Forest. Our appointment to rendezvous with a team of government officials in the most remote area of the National Park, known as South Sabara, is set for 11 o'clock, and we've been traveling for the better part of two hours along what seems to be a never-ending dirt road. With over two dozen kilometers left to cover, the convoy requires skillful, if not tactical, driving, and all the dexterity behind the steering wheel doesn't ensure a smooth ride to journey's end. Along the way, on at least three different occasions, our vehicles got bogged down in thick, sodden mud. Fortunately, a motorized winch was never too far away. At 11 o'clock, or just about, we arrive at a clearing, a frontier point manned by military personnel. Our geographic location is plotted on a virtual map embedded in the mind of seasoned ranger Derek Chan. We are about 10 kilometers south of Karakol and about 10 kilometers north of Rio Blanco Conservation Post. And uh, here we are about 1,500 meters, right? from the border, so that's 1.5 kilometer. The proximity of neighboring communities on the other side of the Belize-Guatemala border makes this location a breeding ground for illegal activity. The presence of poachers just beyond the line of sight poses a perennial threat to the Chiquibul National Park, as well as its extraordinary biodiversity of flora and fauna. At over 600,000 acres, the Chiquibul remains one of the last expanse of pristine biodiverse tropical forest in Belize, and in fact in the wider Central American region. But the high intrinsic economic value is why it continues to be plagued by the multitude of threats, including transboundary environmental infractions. Already, over 3,000 acres have been significantly altered because of such illegal land use practices. As such, this expanse of wilderness has to be protected against incursions. The area of Sebara is one of the farthest areas uh, far reach in the Chiquibul. Uh, so doing like um, regular patrols, uh, daily patrols is very difficult out here. By the time you get here, it takes you three days and then that means that you are not effective. So construction of a conservation post here will be more efficient because they will be on you know, 24 hours and 365 days of, of, the, of the year. Realizing the need for a station to be placed here, the Protected Areas Conservation Trust, PACT, has erected a camp that overlooks the area. Sabada is now one of several posts built along the western border. We have quite a few of these dotted along the western border for the specific purpose of uh, maintaining um, the, the serenity of the Chiki Bull to ensure that what is in here is preserved for, for further use. So this will definitely enhance what we're doing out here and improve that we have people permanently stationed here now so that our patrols will be able to stay a bit longer and ensure that the deterrence method is applied properly. That system of discouraging and preventing unwanted visitors from pillaging natural resources found in the Chiki Bowl is one that works best when boots are on the ground on a full-time basis. This area this hot spot, this Sebada, you will all agree, is a very remote area where operational reach has proven to be difficult. And this challenge, which is amplified during the rainy season, poses very serious and sometimes extremely dangerous restrictions for the presence of our security forces here in the Chickabool and onwards to the western border. Illegal activities thrive. Agricultural encroachments, marijuana plantations, harvesting of chate, leaves and logs, poaching of our exotic protected animals and the general exploitation of our natural resources. 
These issues provided the genesis of the Chickable Forest Investment Initiative, which is a strat strategy to strengthen enforcement and protection of the reserve. That plan of action has seen millions of dollars being set aside for the safeguarding of this invaluable resource. Despite the hefty investment, the threat persists. Right across from the border we have communities. Uh, the closest communities are within two kilometers of the border, right, in, in Guatemala. And, um, and then there is just a number of other communities around uh, the area, which could be up to 10 communities in the near, you know, 10 kilometers from the border. And all those people, they depend largely from the forest for, for, um, for food, right? So they will cut forests for planting corn and, and whatever is their staple food, beans, squash, and so on. So um, the, the, as you can see around here, this area is, is uh, what we call a wamil, which is a forest that they had cut some five years ago, and they planted corn, and, um, and then they abandoned it. Leaving it unattended is perhaps what allowed local law enforcement agencies to capitalize on the cleared land, making use of it by building the observation post. It's an effective lookout point, but communication by radio can prove quite challenging. What we have done here today is a part of a long-term plan to put more of our footprint in this area to make our presence more felt in this area and um, hoping to deter uh, the encroachments that have been happening. Um, this is only one in, in a number of uh, uh, things that we have planned to try to uh, improve our presence in this area. Reporting for News 5, I am Isana Caetano.